Mark, uh, Chris, I want to ask you um, about uh, the potential for combinations, either with other targeted agents or with uh, cytotoxic agents. I know uh, your colleague Naira Rizvi presented data for um, standard cytotoxic combos with nivolumab. Yeah, um, as you mentioned, nivolumab has been the most um, widely studied in, in that group. Um, and it's been given with all kinds of standard Basically IV chemotherapies. Uh, they, they called it the octopus trial, but I don't think there's an octopus with the 18 16, arms. 16 arms, right. Yeah. Double octopus. It's like a, a really, yeah, double octopus, <laughs> triple. Um, and it's been given with uh, T EGFR TKIs as well. Um, but as usual, you know, if you add low-dose aspirin to tamoxifen, you're going to have more side effects. So you add any kind of combo, you're going to get more side mm -hmm. effects. And I think that's what we saw in, in these trials. Um, I, I think there, doesn't, there isn't a good reason to have to give cytotoxic chemotherapy with these drugs. And because you know you're going to have more toxicity putting them together, probably a better strategy is going to be doing one and then the other. I think that's so where BMS people are going. BMS is actually uh, uh, initiating a trial comparing upfront mm -hmm. yeah. in the PDL1 positive uh, right. cohort uh, versus standard chemo. A, a lot of right. uh, I, a lot of the developers uh, have done that, um, and they've uh, just given it upfront. Um, when you add it with another agent uh, going after immune checkpoints like ifilimumab or trimalumumab, uh, again you you add those side effects together. Uh, and you know, it's uncertain right now whether that's going to be an advantage as well. In melanoma, yeah. that generated response rates of the 30, 40 percent range. I mean, that was unprecedented. Mm -hmm. but, it, it, uh, it did. Whether that shows out and proves out in lung, you know, that's to be determined. Also, you know, you're adding in all the ipilimumab side effects to the nivolumab side effects, and and that can be substantial. This it's requires a brave very, new world of side yeah, of very uh, robust patients. Mark. Yeah, my point, particularly when you realize that in general practice, the average lung cancer patient is 71 years old, has a lot of comorbidities. Um, it's, it could potentially be quite toxic therapy in uh, many of the patients. And, and like you say, it may be great for the robust younger patient, but not necessarily applicable to all lung cancer patients. I didn't know how to spell infliximab, <laughs> let's be honest. Mark, I know how to spell it now. Mark Szynski, can you uh, comment a bit on the future prospects, assuming one or more of these compounds gets approved, and right. that's pretty much the presumed, future prospects of uh, exporting this to earlier stage to either the adjuvant or locally advanced setting. Right. I mean, I, I think as enthusiastic as we all are about the immunotherapies that are being studied, I think we have to put it in perspective. We're drawing conclusions and enthusiasm from phase one trials, for the most part done at selected centers. These are highly selected. Ben mentioned heavily pretreated patients. Well, if you're heavily pretreated and you can get to a comprehensive cancer center with a PS zero to one, you're probably a different patient than, than many uh, you see in, in practice. Having said that, um, you know, we do have ongoing trials comparing to our standard uh, therapies in this mm -hmm. disease. So that answer we will get to in a year or two when we see results from these trials. Mm -hmm. uh, if those are, are, are show a place for immunotherapy, then I think the logical thing, and we're going to learn a lot about the biomarker uh, sorts of things, is, you know, we've had a huge lull in stage 3 disease with chemo radiotherapy. We've not seen any progress in the last exactly. 10 to 15 years. Exactly. And so that is an opportunity, I think, if you show benefit and you can identify a population. Uh, I, I don't know how much work that there's been uh, reported to date about, you, you know, do, does this mechanism have a radiosensitizing effect? That, you know, I don't know the answer to that question. Well, There's that the would be added concern about pneumonitis. These well, yeah, particular PD-1 uh, antibodies have caused pneumonitis, yes, and yes. that's a common uh, uh, sequelae but, but, after right. chemo radiation, so it might it exacerbate it, it. it? It very well could, and it would be a concern. And obviously, initial trial designs have to take into account these sort of safety. Um, issues uh, in terms of monitoring and all that kind of stuff. And I would argue the same thing uh, is true um, uh, in the adjuvant setting. Uh, you know, again, I mean, all of us feel good about cisplatinum-based therapy, but let's face it, the hazard ratio in the LACE meta-analysis is, what, 0.87 or, or so? It's not a huge benefit. The absolute benefit we give pa patients is relatively There minimal. already is a proposal you know, being developed in mm -hmm. ECOG now uh, to use nivolumab, and it's actually a perfect setup yeah. Uh, because you have tissue, you have a big piece of tissue, right. so you can make a really good estimation uh, if, that, if that's you know, the endpoint that's going to be chosen. So hopefully that can, that can move forward. Similar proposal in uh, uh, RTOG, the new energy mm -hmm. group, to look at it in locally advanced after 
uh, an atopicide platinum radiation regimen, you'd be pleased, Mark, um, <laughs> because avoiding uh, the steroids that theoretically might nullify the activity, although that's never really been proven. Except when you get the colitis. Well, that, so <laughs> since you bring it up, Mark, <laughs> please talk about some of the toxicities yeah. and the, the extra level of uh, vigilance that we Well, I think one, one thing that anybody who's given these drugs impressed with is they do perturb your immune system. There's no question about it. And they do so in, in profound ways. And, and just like with the ipilimumab, it's, it's a whole new spectrum of side effects. I think with the nivolumab, the big one is probably rash. Uh, and again, it's forced us to go back to dermatology school to talk about management for that. The nice thing about these side effects, though, because they're all immune-mediated, we have ways of attacking them. Steroids tend steroids, to work mm -hmm. quickly. Steroids almost always work. Uh, and um, also uh, more aggressive therapies, like I, I mentioned infliximab, you know, it's commonly used with uh, the colitis that one sees with uh, ipilimumab. So I think we have a good ways of uh, going after this. If patients get grade three or four toxicity, can you rechallenge them, or uh, is that I, a big I, issue? I think people are uncomfortable doing that right now. Um, uh, they generally would treat them and, and, and probably not retreat them, though there, there is some controversy. I think our melanoma colleagues will answer that question for us mm -hmm. uh, uh, because they have, uh, and I think as someone mentioned already, the results in melanoma, particularly getting IPI and NEVO together, uh, have been very impressive. Mm -hmm. And they've kind of pushed the envelope there quite a bit. Uh, but, but some of these side effects are really profound, and, and, and you have to be careful. And yet some patients really do not have side effects. So but, it's really well, a very uh, interesting uh, range of variation. It's a lot like bevacizumab. Yeah. You know, a huge number of people get it. it, it I like to call it chemo without consequences. Mm -hmm. But there are some various... <laughs> There are some very serious side effects that right. happen, right. And, and these drugs are kind of the same. Right? Yeah, and they're unpredictable and catastrophic when right. they happen, yeah. uh, but it's they a small be. percentage. Yeah. I think we just don't have uh, the ability yet to predict who's going to suffer toxicity and who's not, similar mm -hmm. to perhaps efficacy data on these drugs. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't well, know we if we know we yet. Have some. What, one, other tip, one other tip, though, I'll give folks. These are very potent effectors on the immune system, very potent. And they're antibodies, so they're there a long time. This idea of giving a Medrol dose pack and everything's got to go away, that is not true. <laughs> you have somebody that has you know, nephritis due to one of these drugs, need to they them need to be on steroids, steroids for months paper. and months. And mm -hmm. the same thing is true with the pneumonitis. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's, uh, it's, you have to learn. Any final comments? Uh, start off with Ben about yeah. this uh, class of drugs? I think it's, uh, as we've discussed, very exciting uh, group of agents, not only because of what we've seen in terms of efficacy, in terms of not only response rates and duration of response, but their tolerability. I think for all of us who treat our advanced stage patients, uh, tolerability is a, is a big issue, and the ability to tolerate these drugs is just important to me as the efficacy data. So I'm, I'm enthused, I'm excited. The, the patients that we've had on our clinical trial with nivolumab have done very well. Uh, so I await further studies, and as Mark said, I think as much excitement as we have, we you know need to wait for the phase three literature to come out. I, so, I think it will be positive, but I think we have to temper the enthusiasm until then. Yeah.